All right, Hebrews chapter 11. We read verse 23 and verse. And they were not afraid of the king's command. The parents of Moses hid him for three months, and they were not afraid of the king's command because the king's command was contrary to that. And we will find that. Verse 27. Speaking about Moses again, he said, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. The entire life of Moses was about defiance. His parents were not afraid of the king's command. He too forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. And so our focus tonight is not fearing the king's wrath. One word is in verse 23 and it's in verse 27. And the word is King. Somebody repeat that when we say king. In Bible days, kings are not what they look like now. Kings were sovereign. Kings were absolute rulers. Their decrees were laws. So if anybody is going to go against what a king says, he must have something more than the natural behind him. And the Bible showed us what was, be, what was behind the activities of Moses' parents and Moses' decision. And the Bible told us it is that thing called faith. Hallelujah. In scripture days, it looks to me like the destiny of nations was determined by who rules them. Who is their king? Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 16 and 17. Ecclesiastes 10, 16 and 17. Scripture says, What to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning? And in verse 17, it says, Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your princes feast at the proper time, for strength and not for drunkenness. What determines whether a land embraces woe or blessing is the type of king that he has. Whether it's a king that is a child or is a king that is a son of nobles. The import and the impact of kings is far reaching. Are we together? And the Bible never wants us to be ignorant of it. In Proverbs chapter 24 verse 21. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21. The, the writer of Proverbs was giving his son a counsel. He said, my son, fear the Lord. And what? And the king. Do not associate with those who are given to change. Go to verse 22. For their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin? Those two can bring. What are, who are those two? The Lord and what? The king. Power. It's not something to easily ignore. If they tell you that there's electricity somewhere, say that I have power. When you put your hand in the socket, you will know. And you can despise authority. But it's the day you violate the law that you will know the power of authority. Are you following me? Are you following me? Please don't be a lawbreaker. Fear the Lord and the king. Don't be given to those who are given to change. For you don't know the calamity that those two can bring. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. The Bible was describing the reign of kings in this way. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. It says, where the word of a king is, 
there is power and who may say to him what are you doing i've used this scripture to establish to you that kings are not people who merely wish kings are people who have power and authority to execute what they say so when you hear that the parents of moses did not eat the command of the king or Moses forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king it is not a trivial issue it is a serious issue it was coming in conflict with something that has power and nobody can say to that person what are you doing are you following me church kings like I said the other time, I said it's as if the destiny of nations is determined by who rules them. July 18, 64 AD, 64 years after the death of Christ. How many of you have heard that statement before? That while Rome burned, Nero was fiddling. What it means is that July 18, 64 AD, there was a massive outbreak of a fire outbreak in Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire, that burned for days and destroyed 70% of that capital. At that point, the Roman Emperor was a man called Nero. And some people believe he was the one behind that inferno. So what did he do? They believed that when the city was burning, he was just playing on a harp and enjoying himself. So when they want to describe an irresponsible leader, they said, while Rome is burning, Nero was playing a fiddle. So if they use that statement for you, they are, they are actually telling you you are irresponsible and that authority committed to you is violated. Do you understand what I'm saying? So th that's, that's their perception, that while, while Rome was burning, Nero was fiddling with his app because the actions and the inactions of leaders have consequences. Especially in a nation that we are. If anybody tells you that leadership does not have consequences, lie to you. Who rules a place, who governs a place is very important. Evil to the plans of God. Are you following me, church? Are you hearing me? I said, even what? To the plans of God. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. I'll just be taking you gradually this evening. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. The Bible says, when the righteous are in authority, what happens? The people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. Is it important who rules? Who rules determines what happens to us. When the wicked rules, the people groan. In other words, if you just take this scripture literally, you can determine the type of people who are ruling us. I'm not the one that called them. If you are rejoicing, we are ruled by a righteous. But if you are groaning, they give their best, but everything seems like life is hanging on a thread. That is not God's plan, and that is not the reflection of righteousness. Are you still following? You are ready? Authority is important. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 7. I'm still speaking to you about kings. And, I, and, and the reason why I need to elaborate about kings is because when I tell you not fearing the wrath of the king, you need to know I'm speaking about a formidable power that faith can give you power and strength to go against in obedience to God. Are you following? Romans chapter 13 from verse 1. Let every soul be subject to governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And authorities that exist are what? Appointed by God. Therefore, whoever receives the authority receives the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil in normal circumstances. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. 
If you see your pastor and you are running, is it that something is wrong with you? If you if you are doing what is good, it is not easy. It's not hard for you to come to authority. Are you following me? Do you want, do, if do you want to be unafraid of the authority, do what is good and you will what? You will have praise from the same. Glory to God. For he is God's minister to you for your good. But if you do evil, be what? Be afraid. For it does not bear the sword in vain. For it's God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Verse 5. Therefore you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Yes. And for, because of this, you also pay taxes for their God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. And verse 7, I'll stop there. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Give custom to whom custom is due. Don't import a car and refuse to pay custom and say, I have faith. They will impound your car. God will not talk from heaven. Say amen. Why? Because there is no authority. Authority as a concept by itself has God behind it. Are you following me? All of them, in that Romans chapter 13, the Bible called them in many places ministers of what? Of God. They are God's ministers. And so because they are important, how many of you know whatsoever is important to God becomes important to the devil? Why is it important to the devil? Because the devil must thwart whatsoever is important to God. Are you following me? The day the heavens opened over Jesus and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. The Bible said he went into the wilderness. And the next thing that happened after the voice of God came was the temptation of the devil. Whatsoever is important to God, we attract the attention of the enemy. Glory to God. And that, so if kings and authority is important to God, you must understand that it will attract what? The attention of the enemy. So, it, because the enemy now knows it can do so much bad when he seizes that concept of authority. For example, in Psalm 2 from verse 1, Psalm 2 from verse 1 to 8. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth, kings are what? ideas of God. Are you following me? But they've become something that the demonic powers of this world have seized. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against what? The Lord. They should have been the ministers of the Lord but they can become a structure against the Lord. Against the Lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bonds in pieces. And cast away their cause from us. He who sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath. And distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Stop in verse 8. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. The kings of the earth, the enemy has been able to identify that our authority is very important to God and is looking for a way to what? To seize it. Are you, are you following me? That's the same way he pointed to man. The two trees that God said are important. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Don't anything that is important to God catches the attention of the devil because he can easily use it to thwart whatsoever God wants to do. Are you following me, church? So the Bible said, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, still speaking about this kings and the interest of Satan in them. The Bible said, but we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Verse 8, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for have they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 
one of the most important set of people that the enemy went for to be able to achieve his plan to crucify Jesus were the what? The rulers of this age. Because if he blinds them, he can always, he can, he can manipulate the purpose of authority and use it for his own agenda. Are you following me? Are you beginning to see that it's not an insignificant thing who is in authority? It's a very important thing. Who is in authority? Who is in authority will either determine whether we rejoice or we groan. Glory to God. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, 1 Peter 2, verse 17, Peter gave us a counsel. He said, Fear God. But honor the king. Tell your neighbor, fear God, but honor the king. It was Pastor Adiboy and Obasanjo that were discussing when Obasanjo was president. So Obasanjo said, I can show you that I have more power. He said, when you want to do your meeting, I can declare curfew. If the president declares curfew, Except your God helps you, no matter how burning the fire is inside of you, nobody will come. Isn't it? So, and it, it was like he caught Baba, rather than the Baba now turned it around. He said, But I can determine, I can pray whether you will wake up. <laughs> These are very dangerous influences that God must give you the wisdom to know how to navigate. You must fear God. But please, you must honor the king. Because it's important. In Proverbs 14, verse 35, the Bible began to speak to us the descriptions of what the king, what, the attitude the king has on you, what it means. Proverbs 14, verse 35. Proverbs 14, verse 35. The king's favor is towards a wise servant. But his wrath is against him who causes shame. There is something called what? The king's wrath. And the king's wrath is towards him who causes shame. Like the king, like authority promotes good work, but it's judgment for what? Evil works. The same thing in Proverbs 16, verse 14. Proverbs 16, verse 14. In, as messengers of death is what? The king's wrath. But a wise man, a king's wrath is not a binu talaka. If the king is angry, it will have consequence. How many of you have read that story in Esther? The Bible said when the king came back from the garden and saw a man lying down and prostrating for Esther, the king said, ah, will he even Rape my wife in my presence. The Bible said before the word dropped from the king's mouth, they've covered a man's head. The king's rot are messengers of death. Uh, are you hearing me? So when you hear, not fearing the king's rot, that's a man that defied death. That's not natural. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 12. The king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion. Are you hearing me? The king's wrath is like what? See, go to the express now, it's blocked. If a ruler and a leader determines that in 30 minutes he wants to send, he wants to clear that place but under every circumstance, and it brings the whole force of state behind him to do it, they will clear it. The one whose car will spoil, will spoil. You get what I'm saying? The king's wrath is like a roaring of a lion. When a lion roars, you are transfixed. You can't even move. That's why the only thing that could have taken Moses out of Egypt is something strong. They called it faith. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing this roaring of a lion, not fearing the king's wrath. Hallelujah. The king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, but his favor 
It's like what? Dew on the grass. Proverbs, let me show you his favor. Proverbs 16 verse 15. Proverbs 16 verse 15. The, in the light of a king's face is life. And his favor is what? It's like a cloud of the latter day. Are you seeing powers? Whether the king smile or frowns at you, it has consequence. Is rot messengers of death? Is smile due? Proverbs twenty nine verse twenty six. Proverbs twenty nine verse twenty six. That's why the Bible says many seek the ruler's favor. Why do they seek the ruler's favor? His countenance is what the dew of heaven, like Lazarin. That's why all student association pay visit to one of their members when he wins an election. What you've been struggling to do for 20 years, if you have somebody that is in authority, you will get it done in five minutes. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You see, these are the reasons why people don't want to leave power. If you are, if they announce you as governor of your state today, there are people that will come to you and say, what do you want to, what do you want us to do? Who do you want us to make to disappear? Is it not funny? When they have change of government in Oyo State, it affects change of leadership of, 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 of a driver. It trickles down to that. They can say, ah, you cannot be governor. And somebody that does not like you is chairman of uh, road workers. And your kid can governor. They make you see how absolute your power is. Many seek the king's way. So when you hear, and that was, that was a king in Egypt in the days of Moses who was using his power in the contrary way. In Acts chapter 7 verse 18 and 19, the Bible described the influence of this king called Pharaoh. The Bible said, till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people. And oppress what? Our forefathers. Making them expose their babies so that they might not live. They took their own babies and they were almost throwing it into the water because of another king that arose. That's why the Bible said, by faith, Moses' parents refused to, were not afraid of the command of the king because they saw that their child was a proper child or was a beautiful child. Something more than the ordinary must dwell in you when you are living under the reign of a wicked ruler. Are you hearing? The pastor, what type of sermon is this? You will get, it's, a, it's faith sermon. Because you need faith. Because the ones around us here, they are not righteous rulers. Let me tell you plain. They don't send whether your business fails. If they send, how will you be in a nation? There's no Nepal. There's no fuel. There's no job. There's no... It is benevolent people now, people that have faith that invite visitors to their house. Are you following? And they don't mind. God must put what, it was, what was in Moses' mother and Moses' heart in a horse. Are you, fear, are you with me? Now, I've shown you the weight of kings. When you read about Jericho in the scripture, one of the first things that come to your mind is that Jericho has, has, is a city with walls. But let me tell you something. The most powerful influence of Jericho was not his walls. It was his king. How did I know? Joshua chapter 2. 
from verse 1. Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men from Akai, Akasia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a allot named Rehab and lodged there. And it was told what? The king of Jericho saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rehab, saying, Bring out the men. How many of you know wherever the word of a king is? So this man was not giving counsel. He was giving what? Command. Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. This woman saw that the decree was not a decree of righteousness. And she decided to go what? Contrary, she eat them. So she said, "Yes, the men came to me, but I do not know where they were from." And you know the story. He went to the king. He said, "But uh, as as before, the gate was shut. The men went. He said, said pursue them. And after the people started pursuing them, then he went to the men up. He said, "See, since the day you crossed the Red Sea, there have been fear here. I know the power of my king." But I do not doubt the power of your God. If you are living in a system corrupted by wickedness, you must have a clear understanding of the sovereign power of God. Are you hearing me? Because that's the only thing that will push you. He said, since they came out of Egypt, we've had how your God opened the Red Sea. And from that point, they have been trembling here. And he said, please show me mercy. Now what I am doing now is risky. But I would rather risk on the side of your God than on the side of my king. That's not fearing the king's wrath. Those guys said, okay, what you've said is true, but this is the issue. You must not disclose whatsoever has happened between us and yeah, you must not tell anybody. And, and you must tie the scarlet thread on your window. And you must gather all your family into your own house. Anybody that steps out of this of your house, is, their blood is on their head. We will not be responsible. And she said, yes. And she let down the men through the window and let them go. She despised the command of her king. The greatest stress and strength of Jericho was not their walls. It was their king. And that is why what Rehab did was, was recorded in the all of fame of faith. I want you to know if you're a good student of the Bible that the victories of Canaan land were counted by the number of kings conquered. Are you following? If you go to Joshua chapter 10, because of time, I'll just skip some things. Joshua chapter 10. The Bible says, it came to pass when Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, had, thank you, sir. Had, how Joshua had taken I and utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and his king, so he had done to I and his king, and now the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel were among them. That they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than I, and all his men were mighty. Therefore, Adonisak, the king of Jerusalem, sent to Oam, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jamut, 
Japhia, king of Lachish, Debia, king of Eglon, saying, Yes, come to me, help me that we may attack Gideon. Five kings. That's not a, that's not a small battle. And it was in that battle that the Gibeonites had to call for Joshua, please come and help us. And Joshua came to fight in that battle. And Joshua spoke that landmark experience. What did he say? Sun, stand still in your place. Moon, stand over the hill of Ajalon until God wins his victory for Israel. But that's not even my focus. I, I'm just running. And if you get to verse 16, after these kings have, were defeated, they ran and fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. Five kings. And they told Gideon, we've seen the kings in the, in the cave. He said, roll a stone upon them. Keep pursuing the enemy, but don't, don't get distracted. And by the time you get to verse 22, after God had given them victory, verse 22, then Joshua said, open the mouth of the cave and bring out the five kings to me from the cave. Yes? And they did so, and they brought out the five kings to him from the cave, and the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, they are running. The king of Jamun, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, five kings. So it was when they brought out those kings to Joshua that Joshua called all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of Israel who went with me, come near, put your neck, put your feet on the neck of these kings. This was sovereigns. In the entire mindset of an average Israelite, they always look at those kings as what? As far removed, highly placed. But God, Joshua had to initiate them into a normal lifestyle of conquering kings. I'm trusting God that God will put it into you, a normal lifestyle of being able to defy what men fear. You are not getting this. So Joshua said, put your feet on this neck. And they drew near and put their feet on the necks. And Joshua said, do not be afraid, not be dismayed. Be strong and be of, be of good courage. For thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. What does he say? Get used to defying kings. Get used. To define that which men tremble before. See, most of us have never come into a point of conflict where you have to obey God against an authority. That's never happened to you before. Because you have always taken the careful paths that does not ruffle anybody's feather. But Moses' mother refused the commandment of the king because he saw that his child was what? Was proper. And Moses too what? Departed from Egypt not fearing the king's wrath. The king's wrath is enough to just keep you in place. So Joshua said, guys, get used to putting your feet upon what? Upon the neck of kings. I'm praying for you that God will put so much faith in you. Nothing will be powerful enough to castrate your faith. I don't have time. I would have shown you one of the sons of Gideon that Gideon said should come and kill a king. The Bible says he could not draw his sword. All these things you think you have courage. If they bring you to where earthly, don't look for spiritual power. Earthly power. How many of you know there is earthly power? They are, they, are, they are governments on earth. They can decide by a decree and a policy to frustrate your line of business. And they will sit down. Let's turn law school to two and a half years. You will protest. Eh? And nothing will happen. They can decide NYC, they are eating our money through the 36,000. Let them be carrying guns. Let's be recruiting them. Our parents will fight. Some of you will escape to Benin Republic because, but the policy. Are you following? 
Even pastors will use wisdom when they are addressing such issues. I'm telling you that when you approach kings, they can, they can incapacitate your faith, except God has helped you to get used to putting your feet on the neck of kings. Are you following? How many of you want in Nigeria to change? When you go out, your mother will call you. Have they shot gun beside? That's what kings do. A king can say, hey, I want that place to be dispersed in 30 minutes. That's a command. Even if you have 7,000 people, except God, they will disperse you. They will try tear gas. No, they first try water cannon. If you are proving strong, you go to tear gas. If you are proving strong, go to rubber bullet. If you are proving strong, they go to live bullet. At the time they are in live bullet, if you are 7,000, you will remain 300. How many of you will still be part of the 300? Yoruba, you say? Moja Mosa? English people say it in this way. It is he that that uh, how do they say? He that he that fights and runs away lives to fight another day. They come out tolling. That's the power of the king. So when God is putting something in you that can look at the king and put your feet on their neck, is not that's some very strong manifestations of power. So in, in Judges chapter 5, verse 19 to 22, my, my thought is simple. You will get me now. The Bible says, it was speaking about the battle of Barak and the battle of Deborah. The kings came and fought. Then kings of Canaan fought in, Ta in Tana by the waters of Megiddo. They took no spoils of silver. They fought from the heavens. The star fought from their courses against Sisera. The torrent of Kishon swept them away. The ancient torrent, the torrent of Kishon. Oh, my soul, march on in strength. Verse 22. Then the horses who pounded the galloping, the galloping of his teeth. Verse 21 says, Oh, my soul, march on in strength. Another translation says, Oh, my soul, you have threshed upon strength. That is, when you, also, this thing we have, we have done. We have crossed a major barrier in our life. How many of you know that there, there is a point you get to where you cross some fears? You have trampled upon strength. Take your mind back. Um, if you go back to Ojoke, he was the most dreaded Christ school principal. If you meet him today, what do you owe him? Oh no. Those days when you say, who are those boys there? You can never imagine a day can come when you will stand in his presence. And there are things still today that you cannot imagine you can do. I told you the story before of Pastor Bakai. That when he got born again, so one day he was looking for a school fees. When, when, you don't, when you are poor, the school fees is your master. So he went to uh, Chief M. Kuyabiola, who was a Muslim, so, because that one was giving them money. And, and that one gave him money. So he took the money and prostrated. And, and that one said, why are, you, why are you prostrating? Are you not a Muslim? Muslim don't prostrate. He, he couldn't say. He said, in case I say, no, I've been born again. He said, is that, are you not, is that, yeah, yeah. How many of you know when you answer without answering? It's because you have met, you met strength. When you meet strength, when they ask you a question, you answer without answering. But the day is coming. He said, the team pained him, went to me, cried. But God gave him a second chance. 1993. MQ was contested and the Lord gave him a word. SDP will fail. NRC will lose and be scattered. The military will fall. Three forces in an election. 
But one of my friends recently said, Jagaba will not be president. Even me, I called him. You see, there are certain things if God has not put strength in you, you don't say it. To. It's, it's more than I know. But a day is coming soon in somebody's life here where you will put your feet upon the neck of kings. You will tread upon strength. What is bigger than you now will be beneath you. Yeah. That amount of money you are hearing now, that when you hear, hey, 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 you will spend it as a gift. Yeah. Are you following me? Because that king, Moses has always feared. One day God did something in Moses and he did not fear the wrath of that king again. Ah, yeah. Oh, kings are in authority, but let me tell you, you can get to a point where God will say something in you. With confidence, you can see the ruler of your nation and tell him, don't say the Lord. Who is trusting God to restore that power? And some of you, when you see your heart, even if God gave you a message, the message will disappear. All you need to see is siren. Panabaza. She, one of my friends recently in America, he said, Pastor, the way he came to to America. He's a pastor there. It was privileged to go and see him. You, you have not made strength. The pastor. He was calling. He said, the type of hotel I saw. He said, ah. He said, ah. He said, the old seventh floor. Not room. How many of you have seen strength before? You will know whether you have courage. He said, they took it. He said, when I got there, Papa was like, I'm sorry, sir. He said, Baba, they said Baba wants to eat. And he waited for two hours. When Baba came, Baba said, It's my friend, my age mate. Baba said, Sorry, sir, I kept you waiting. He said, immediately he said, Sorry, sir. Everything he planned to see <laughs> disappeared. You don't get it. He called me and said, Man of God, my age will go. How many of you have entered intimidating? If it's only a government shaman you met, you lost your mind. Say, my cancel of man, who want to see you will tread upon strength. Cancel, governor, four years. You don't believe me? Ask a query, man. Why the convict? Those are not, see, the things we fear. Even a, we can disobey God for these things because we have no acquired strength. That's what I'm trying to tell you tonight. And it's time that you as a believer begin to acquire spiritual stamina. It's time this intimidation of the world loses grip on you. Are you hearing me, church? I don't know whether you're hearing me. God told Moses, I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that I can multiply my signs. Pharaoh's heart that is added is not bad news. The more you harden Pharaoh's heart, the more God's signs happen. The more wicked rulers rise. It's a platform for the multiplication of God's signs. The reason why we are troubled when we see hardened rulers of wickedness is because God's signs are not with us. Every Israelite was, was troubled when Moses, and Pharaoh's heart was added. God told Moses. In fact, God told Moses, and Pharaoh will not let you go. It's part of the plan. So that I can. Oh my God. The harder the enemy makes it. The stronger God comes for you. Uh, you didn't you missed a good place to say amen. The harder the enemy makes it, the stronger God comes for you. Uh, it's like, are you following me? The harder the, it, 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 it is for you, it, it is for business to thrive in our nation. God's signs will multiply the higher. Because you are God's people. Are you following me? I will add in his heart so that I will do my wonders. In Egypt.
As powerful as Pharaoh, his, his story started from Exodus chapter 1, from verse 8. There arose a new Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. And he began to deal treacherously with God's people. And, you know, he, he, he spoke to his people. He said, let's deal subtly with these people, for they are mightier than us. And, you know, and he started the whole thing. Do you know that as powerful as Pharaoh is, there were midwives who defied him. He told the midwives of Egypt, when the, the what? The, the Israelites are given back. If it's a son, kill it. If it's a daughter, keep it alive. But the Bible says, and the midwives fear God. You are about to encounter. The reason why you fear men is because you have not perfected God's fear. Because perfect love. I didn't get it. Cast out all fear. See, we are so afraid today because our fear of God is very limited. We fear what we see. We don't fear the one who controls the breath of the ones we fear. As powerful as Pharaoh is, there's a Moses father and mother who defied him. Do you know what the Bible, according to that writing in Exodus, in Acts 7, when, our, when Israelites were giving their babies and throwing it to water, there were Egyptians, the midwives, who did not hit Pharaoh. I will show you through scripture that every despotic leader, God has always raised people, who by the power of conscience and faith in God have power to stand before them. For every Nebuchadnezzar, there's a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are you following for every Pharaoh, there is a Moses mother. There is a midwife. There is what? There is a Moses himself. For every error, there is a wise man. A wise man that refused to go back to him. Are you following me? Are you following me? Uh, if I have to, for, a, for a Jeroboam, there is a young prophet. That they told, sit down in this place, come and eat. I said, God has given me a word I must not eat. God... We must not feel so helpless because we are trapped under wicked rulers. Are you following? So I'm just tired. I just frustrated my dream. There's something running your life that is eternal. It's bigger than the reign of a king. It will come and it will go, but faith abides. Are you hearing me? And we must begin to activate that description, that dimension of our life. Because it's only by it that we will stand. By the time you get to Exodus 8, verse 16 to 19. The Lord said to Moses, said to Aaron, stretch out your rod, strike the dust of the land that may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lies on man and beast, and all the dust of the land became lies throughout all the land of Egypt. Verse 18. And the magicians so walked with their enchantment to bring forth lies, but they could not. So there were lies on man and beast. There were, there were three types of plagues. The one that the magicians replicated, the ones the magicians could not replicate, and the ones that afflicted the magicians themselves. By the time you get to the boil, the Bible says, even the magicians could not get up from their place, for boil was upon them. God began to show where his own power excels. The church of Jesus must know God for who he is. Our lack of knowledge of who God is, is why we are totally afraid of what is happening around us. I serve a God who answers prayer. A God who, who installs kings and removes them. Are you following? I, I, am I making sense? Am I making sense? You see, Pharaoh... It's a type of ruler who brought so much pain to his people, both by his action and his inactions. It does look like something close.
Leaders, we always bring impact, right or wrong, by their actions and their I can show you the two. Look at Exodus chapter 10, from verse 1 to 7. Are you getting something tonight? They counted the victory of Joshua and Kings. Soon, you will start counting the things you used to fear that you are not fearing anymore. Yeah. You are not saying the amen now. Yeah. How many of you, some of you are so afraid of poverty, even when it shows you, you will lie before you think. So if I lose the job, then you now go by and say, ah, you are so afraid of lack until you discover you can't lack. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow. They don't. Your father takes care of them. Are you not of more value? Who told you your value is your salary? It's an aberration. You are not redeemed by corruptible things such as gold and silver. You are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Are you following me, church? God must wake the church up to know who we are. And that's where we can break our fear that has been controlling us. Oh my God. Are you hearing me, church? In Exodus chapter 10, verse 1, the Lord said to Pharaoh, to Moses, go into Pharaoh. I have added in his heart and the heart of his servant that I may show these signs of mine before him. Say, Father, every hardness I'm, I'm sensing around me, we reveal your signs. We reveal your signs. We multiply your wonders in my life. Some of you will be fed in famine. Some of you are about to break into your greatest breakthroughs in the midst of the breakdown of the nation. God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Are you hearing me? The more you sense the hardness of Pharaoh's heart, the more my signs multiply. It's not a bad moment for God to show himself. It's even a good moment. A time when we have no police, but the angels of God are not on strike. Ah, the angels of the Lord surround the righteous and they deliver them. You will walk with angelic assistance. They will go before you. They will be behind you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, there is no hospital. But I am the God that healed thee. And I will not put any of the diseases of the Egyptians upon you. What is happening around is not coming to your house. No kidney failure. No heart problem. No brain tumor. In the mighty name of Jesus. The hardness of the land is multiplying. The signs of God in your life and in your journey in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please, please don't throw your hands off in despair. God said to him that you may tell in the hearing of your son and your son's son the mighty things I've done in Egypt. And my son, signs which I've done among them that you, may, they may, that you may know that I am the Lord. Continue. So Moses and Aaron came in to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Or else if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your territory. And they will cover the face of the earth. So that no one will be able to see the earth and they will hear the residue of what is left, what remains to you from the air and they shall eat every tree which grows off for you out of the field. They will fill your houses and the house of your servant, the house of the Egyptians, which neither your fathers nor your father's father have seen since the day they were on the face of the earth to this day. And they turned and went out from Pharaoh. Verse 7. Then Pharaoh's servant said to him, how long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the men go that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not know that Egypt is destroyed? What are they telling you? Pharaoh, your inaction is what? Is destroying the land. Let them go. Leaders 
All Pharaoh needed to do to bring pain to Egypt was to do nothing. You don't get it. Let the people go. They didn't go. He didn't let them go. He didn't let them stay. He just stayed. And the Egyptians called Pharaoh. And I, I need to tell some people around us. Don't they know that the land, in like any country where bandits are attacking presidential convoy, if they don't know, they are going to Magbo. And they want it to look like not. We need to wake some Pharaoh up. Are you blind? In a country where one dollar is 620 naira, and they are calling you, Excellency, don't you know? I won't call Nigeria. That Egypt, because it's as if when some people enter where they are, they become insulated from reality. Pharaoh, don't, you don't go to the field. We go. The hail has destroyed our plant. Low cost have wasted. In case you don't know, Pharaoh's inaction was an affliction. Pharaoh's action was an affliction. Exodus 14 verse 5. What's Pharaoh's action? It was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled. And the act of Pharaoh and his servant was turned against the people. Say, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. So what did he do? He made ready his chariot. The first one that I showed you is how Pharaoh did not act. The next one I'm showing you is how Pharaoh acted. And when he acted, what happened? The Egyptians which you see today... Oh my God, that's why God must help us with leadership. Both their actions and inactions have consequences. Now I'm going somewhere. That is why you cannot, as a Christian, ignore what's happening in leadership. I've shown you now that if they act, it has consequences. If they don't act, it has consequences. What should be our response? Number one. Pray for those in authority. He's asking me. Yeah? And he put it on Twitter. Ah, ah. That's a serious issue. When they are already breaking the prison in the federal capital territory, I go dinko. Let's just be trusting the Lord. Amen. Pray, First Timothy two verse one to five. Pray for those in authority. Tell your neighbor, pray for those in authority. I didn't hear you very well. I'm not hearing you very well. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men. Continue. For kings and all those who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Continue. For this is good and acceptable in sight of, the, of God our Savior. Who desires all men to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth? Verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There is one God that we cry to. And the Bible says, when you pray for kings and those in authority, the Bible says that we might live a peaceable life. Because their actions and inaction can determine peace or lack of it. Praise God. Number two, action. Never get to a point where you are limited by who is the king. Obey the Lord. Fear the Lord even when you are honoring the king. You must know when the king is going beyond his boundaries into your devotion of God. Do you know why? 
His reign is transient. God's kingdom is eternal. Throughout scripture, God kept raising people he has pumped enough faith into who will look at kings with respect and tell the king, oh king, it is well with you. But I cannot but obey God. One of the things that must be present in our time is a people who even though they have reverence for, for people, for, for earthly institutions, they must never lack faith in God. And if there's any time a conflict comes between what God wants and what kings want, God is the right choice. And let me explain that to you. Because Moses, by faith, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, because it was like he saw the invisible. The invisible, the person of God, had greater influence on Moses than the visible, which is what? The person of Pharaoh. And the Bible called it the passing pleasure of sin. And it called that which was invisible the greater treasures of Israel, of God's people. We must get to a point where we know that what God wants to preserve in us is, of, is greater than any passing thing that this world is using to control us. In, in Acts of the Apostles 4, verse 18 to 20, so they commanded them, that is the apostles, they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. What happened? Peter and John answered and said, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you George. Ah, anybody tells you to put your hand in iniquity, know that they will not be your judge on judgment day. They won't be there. The best they will do for you is to increase your salary. But when the affliction of sin comes, they can't save you. Whether it is right for us to obey God, you than God, even you yourself, reason now. No, that is that not what we say. You too, reason now. For we cannot but speak the things which we have. Ask your neighbor, what are the things you cannot but say? You need to get to a point where your encounter of faith has become very resolute that it cannot easily be taken away. There are some of us here, all this our church experience can be taken away by a decree that changes in this nation. Okay now, no church again. You just got that. How are not going to why respite? But we cannot but speak. Why? We do not fear them that kill the body and after they kill the body, they cannot do any other thing. Are you hearing me? This is your power. The reason why the kings of this world have power and control people is because they can have power over people's body until somebody looks at them and says, that's the worst you can do. How many of you know the day you look at somebody and say, do your worst, what are the enter pipeline? She be a mapa. It's Nika that used to have those very funny and silly things. He will say, he will say, <laughs> if he meets an arm robber, that if the guy shoots, it's only one he will shoot. He cannot shoot his second one or something like that. Or if he eats you with a cutlass, I say, a conan. Then you will take that eat, but he must not have the second one. So he will have, some of you will not even take the first seat. When you see the cutlass, what will happen? Now, I'm not saying go and be taking it. But I'm saying get to a point where something's resolute in your spirit. That even what you fear has its limits. You can only kill the body. That's how some of you drop God's plan for you because of your father and mother. All your father said... But Jawalore, what did you do? You to Jawalore. Immediately, your father said, Mo Jawalore, we're not Jawalore or law. Some of us, when we were young, they used our school fees to threaten us that we should not go to fellowship. 
God in his wisdom make sure you go through that path so that you can get to a point in your life where you say, I cannot but speak of the things which I have seen. Are you following me? And because some of us have always accepted compromise as pattern. And you know what you call compromise? Wisdom. Have you seen it? The care of wisdom. Somebody should use wisdom. Please, when, when is that point in your life you will even stand for something? Some we ladies left with the lecturers to have two one. They got two and they are looking for a job. Me bolo ferry day. When they were tempting you in school, you must sleep with me. God knew it was God's plan. God wants you to get to a point where you say, I cannot but. It's also the God, why did you allow it to happen? God said, I allowed it to happen. You must look at Pharaoh in the face and make a choice. Most of us want insulated experiences. We never want to have confrontation, but your faith must have the points of his confrontation. Are you following me, church? It's not the enemy that is working, it's God. God said, make a choice. I said before you life and death, choose life. You make a choice. Your boyfriend does not have money. This one has money, but you know he's going to hell. Make a choice. Get me of her waste investment to me. Make a choice. <laughs> now he said, Can you not have it all together? God said, We have it all together in process. Make a choice. Make a choice now. Now. <laughs> because most of us have not gotten to that point where we say, I cannot but. I cannot but pray. May God give you capacity that some devotions become I cannot but in your life. I cannot but pray. I, can, I cannot but study. I, 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 can, I cannot just be in a home where it's, there's custom in the morning and this in the afternoon but we cannot even discuss God's word. If I take gelato in Paris in the morning and uh, something in uh, Milan in, at night, but when I say the Bible says, what are you saying, my baby? What's that nonsense you are saying? Ah, some of you say, ah, oh, gelato in Laguera. I'm a good I'm a good tip, pastor. <laughs> you are afraid. You are afraid for your life. Not fearing the wrath of the king. What else? What else? The only thing, the worst thing that will happen is that you will not use a car. Isn't it? But you go to heaven. Talk to, are you, I know to talk, say heaven. I know some of you don't like to hear that word. Say heaven. This world you are passing through. Gather everything you can gather here. You won't carry it out. So stop wasting your time. Them that gathered much, they will not have any leftover. Them that gathered little, they will not have any lack. Hey, I have one house in Rwanda, another one in Kigali, one in Soweto. At the end, your grandchildren will sell it. Hear the word of the Lord. They will sell it in ridiculous price. You know, tell the Lord, hey, bawata, hey, bawata. That's the way you, you see where you two are buying some things with joy now. My, oh, what touch it me. You come and give testimony. Don't worry. <laughs> Just do the will of God with it. Because in another generation, they will sell it. The art is the Lord, not you. Not you. The art is the Lord, the fullness, the word, and all of them that dwell in it. You are a stranger passing through. Say so the amen like thunder. They don't like this psalm. They lie. They... If you go to Acts chapter 5, from verse 28, amazing. They, they came to the apostles again. Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? Look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Peter and the apostles answered, We ought to obey God. Rather than me. May you get this type of resolution. That God is more important to be obeyed than men. Are you following me? This is what will push us through. 
to reveal the wisdom of God. We, we ought to obey God rather than men. And look at what they say. Continue. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God exalted the right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are his witnesses and to do things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. And you know the whole story. When they had, they were furious. They wanted to kill them. But this guy said, but at the risk of their life, are you following me? They said, I will say it. What is that thing God has planted in you that at the risk of your life, you cannot but when you hear Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of Pharaoh, he knew the wrath of Pharaoh, he knew that the wrath of a king is messengers of death. He knew what he was signing, but what he saw was more important than that. Are you following me? I know when the king is your friend, it's like deal. I know when the king is your enemy, it's like death. But yet, what I have seen cannot make me deny what God has shown me. Are you, I, am I making sense? God must help us in the church as a people that have come into an experience of God that we cannot deny. That's why I told you, for every Pharaoh, they are the midwives of Egypt. What, who are the midwives? Kill their men, male children. But those who are fair God, they weighed it. They are not ignorant of the wrath of the king, nor the consequences of it. But when they weighed it, they said it's better to choose God. Are you following me? You think people who risk things in faith are people who don't know the consequence of life. In fact, many a times, they are the people who are already informed about the consequences of their action. Are you following me? But they know that choosing God is better. It's like Esther who said, if I die, I die. Esther knew at the point she was going to the king that if the king does not stretch the scepter to you, you die. So she was not walking in ignorance. But what she had seen in God was more persuading than the fear that is outside. Are you following me? I know the power of our kings and of our rulers, how they can do and undo, but I have never forgotten the power of my God. God, who can remove kings and set up another? I don't see many a times when we begin to come in contact with the powers of this world, we begin to forget the powers of our God. Uh, that's why we have to come back to the edifying purposes of memorials. Uh, you understand? I'm still thinking, teaching a sequel of that, which means you must remember God. You must remember that what you feared now was nothing at one time. It's power now. It will soon be nothing. President Obasanjo was in Kekenapeb last week. Hello, Shelley. What power would you be careful now? Only that more about it. They're already plotting it. There is three months. Me, where I will be next year? In fact, me, where I will be 10 years' time? It's already. There are people God has sent ahead. Oh my God. I, because God has a plan for my life. Tell your neighbor, say, God has a plan for my life. For every Pharaoh, there are the midwives. For every Pharaoh, there's a Moses parent who will not be afraid of the king's command. For every Pharaoh, there's a Moses who will forsake Egypt by faith. 
Don't get too terrified by what you see that you forget the God who is unseen, but yet who controls everything. Are you following me, church? For every Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 to 19, Nebuchadnezzar said, I've heard Shadrach, Meshach, and Adegno, that you don't worship my God. Now, when you hear the sound of the psalms, south trees, and the drums, and everything, I command you to bow. If you don't bow, I've, I've what? This is the only decree. You'll be thrown into a furnace burning with fire. And, Nebuchadnezzar, and those ones said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. We, are, we have no need to answer you in this matter. In the face of burning furnace. Some of you, you will smell the furnace. You will change your mind. These ones who are sinning. And the Bible said they eat it this seven times. For you to know that it was potent. The people that were eating it. And the people who are trying to carry them into it. The eat of it killed them. If the eat killed people who are throwing them inside. What should happen to people who entered? They say our God is able to deliver. It does not matter how bad it is. God is still delivering. I said God is still delivering. Now, whether there is a police in your, your locality or not, whether there is a police uh, in your estate or not, God is still delivering. They will miss your house. Uh, you are not hearing me. They will come, they will pass, they will, they will just pass. You know why? Because our God, whom we serve, is able. Never forget, because we are in the hardness of time and the land, that God is able to deliver. If it becomes imperative under command of God for you to do anything, go where people are afraid to go. If you are persuaded is God, our God is able to deliver. Never forget that truth. For every Nebuchadnezzar, there is a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. For every Jeroboam, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 4 to 10. Every Jeroboam. Jeroboam was the one that the king, that the God sent a young prophet to. And the Bible said, when he stretched out his hand to arrest the young prophet for what the young prophet was saying, his hand wither, Kayaba. Our God is still withering hands. They will plan, but they will never be able to execute their enterprise. Uh, it doesn't matter. Some things, some dreams will fail. God said no to them. It does not matter how powerful the orchestration is. If Jesus says no, it is no. The king had the hand on the money. He stretched the hand to the man, but the hand withered. The one did not fall. He was there, but he cannot do what he used to do before. Some people don't need to die to become, to become irrelevant. God can wither their hands and wither their influence and wither their strength. Are you following me? It's, it's not all about death. It's about God determining what prosperous or not. You can have everything. And by the way, the king started begging to restore his hand. When they restored his hand, he said, come and eat. The man said, even if you set your whole table, if there be somebody here today, and even if they set a whole table, because most of you have price. If they just said, if they change the menu from chicken to turkey, your faith begins to shake. Okay then. Is it smoked? They say it's greed. Ah. Ah. Last time I saw that thing was on Chop Junior. Okay, let me just have a taste. No, this guy said set a whole table. Something is inside here. So may, may you be so resolute that there's no enticement of this word that is powerful anymore. Not fearing the wrath of the king, nor even his promises. The church needs, God needs to raise a people like this again. Most of us, they have become too predictable. When they dangle the carrots, we change. When they exclude some of you from some gatherings, your conviction will change. I want my invite me more. Blessed are you when men reject you from their company. Did you read Jesus said it? That's what they did to the true prophets of God. Great is your reward. Some companies you don't need to be there. 
Some of you who are preachers, don't be tired when you de- say, everybody's face is on flyer. I don't know when they put my face on flyer. They are not inviting me to some type of meeting. There are some type of meeting you don't need to go because you will soon discover they are going nowhere. It's just an empty trip. We will just disappear with the wind. I know what I'm saying. If you ever been, if you are in ministry, you discover so many people lose their conviction to trend. Because many a times, trending is the most important thing to people. If they just trend, then it's okay. They want to be seen with Pastor Shea and they want to be seen with Pastor Moon. And they, you know, Do you know Pastor Moon? Paul, you remember, when I came for your meeting last year, Paul told me there's one guy that traveled in. Do you know his goal? He wanted to make sure that with every minister that came, he took a picture. Because he would place it on his social media, it was going to increase his ranking. So when some people say, ah, he, this is, uh, I was one that, uh, Pastor Ty, uh, I know, uh, you don't know Pastor, because there are places he will be talking about it, you will not be there. Uh, Pastor Ty, uh, I invite you on in December. I'm telling you how silly things people do. And sometimes they risk bigger things for these things. Just to be seen. Pharisees, don't think it's new. Pharisees pray in the corner of the street to be seen. To be seen. Even if I'm not seen, may I have my power with my God. May I go into a secret place and my God will honor my voice. May I be part of the people that will decree a thing over this nation and the Lord will execute it. That's the power I want to have. That's the power you must have. I'm not against visibility, but the most important power is power with God. You have visibility and God does not know you. Even Satan is asking a question, who are you? Oh, feel it, huh? For every error, there is a wise man. The error told the wise man, when you have seen the baby, come and tell me so that I can go and worship him. When you make an agreement with the king, it's like a covenant. But the Bible said the Lord appeared to them. Don't go to error. They were going to break. You, for you to know that it was a serious thing. The Bible said when error discovered that they didn't come, what did he do? He went on a murderous rage. That's the risk of that decision they took. But their obedience to what Jesus showed them, what God showed them, was more important than what Herod was expecting. Are you following me? That is the way to live in the seasons that we are. May God plant something in you that time and, and seasons cannot change in Jesus' mighty name. I hope you know that kings are powerful. I've come to show you how to tread on strength, not on uh, weaklings. So I'm telling you things that you will not have an immediate response when it confronts you. You will sit down and think, but oh, God's strength will rise from you to be able to do the right thing. There are certain things you cannot give a one minute answer to. Said the Megan, I heard you didn't bow to my God. Okay, I give you another chance. And they show you burning furnace. And what did they say you should do? Dance to music. Harmonious music. You will say, I'm not dancing, I'm not bowing to the golden statue. I'm dancing to the to the. I mean, you have an option of explaining whatsoever you did around the golden statue. But this man said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not, we are not afraid to answer. Our God! May you be able to still be able to plead God in Nigeria. Some of you they say, God, my one boardroom ah, is there. Our God! When they're about to sack the entire people of your set, somebody will appear in that boardroom and say, Start from the other set, not from this one. That's our God. I've seen people that I know they should not have job in this body. I don't know how somebody can enter banking work for. I have a friend that has been there for close to 15 years. He has not added one qualification. CIB, he did not do. ICA, he did not do. Uh, not he did not do. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about another person. But you, you seem to have even people in the boardroom. This one does not have anybody. Anytime they want to sack his bank, they will. Anytime they want to sack his branch, that month, they will move him to another branch. 
Do you know why? He never, even in his lack, he never stopped giving to God's kingdom. And he's still there till today. Himself does not know how. Until he's in the system too much, they have to promote him. You know? <laughs> So he, he almost became manager. He doesn't know how he got there. He doesn't even know how he got there. Because he had nothing. Right. Pastor Femi knows what I'm talking about. In dressing, he's poor. No, I'm talking about the person. It's not Pastor Femi now. He's not sophisticated. Nothing. But every time, he told me, he said, not less than three cycles of sake. When they want to sack, they would just move him. <laughs> our God is able to deliver uh, there is beauty in your certificate but our God our God <laughs> our God is able to deliver there is beauty in having connection but our God some of you the person you know the day they want to take this our ASIC that's not my God it's the ever present help in the time of trouble you are not hearing me somebody say our God Somebody say, our God is able to deliver. Ah, give me five minutes. Let me tell you. Are you blessed? Second Samuel 24, verse 1 to 10. I'm showing you, I'm not in any way in this teaching, diminished the weight and power of kings. In 2 Samuel 24, the Bible said, David told Joab, go number Israel. Joab told David, that is against what God said now. God said, um, you should not number his people. That his people will be more than the sand of the sea. Go to verse 3. Joab said to the king, now may the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times more than they are. And may the eyes of the Lord, my Lord the king, see it. But why does my lord the king desire this thing? Verse 4. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Ah, how many of you know? I have conviction. I have conviction. When you make power, power has a way of pushing you and molding you into what you don't even believe. Joab does not believe in counting, but the king's word. Joab and the captains of the army went out from the present to count the people. They did everything. Verse 6. Go to verse 6. They came to Gilead. Land of this. They came to Dan, to Jan and around Sidon. Yes. So they counted it. You know the whole story. In fact, if, 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 if you get them read First Chronicles 21, 1 to 8, speaking about the same story. In fact, the Bible says he didn't even get to some places because he counted the word abominable, but he couldn't resist it. That's the power of kings. You see, that's why God must build something inside of you. You can't fight kings just by just your willpower. There must be something more than willpower inside of you. By faith, Moses' mother. By faith, Moses. Are you following me? Am I making sense? It's more than home training. When you meet the word of king, it will be word of kings, people who can determine your salary, your lifting, where you will end, they will bend your home training. Have you met people that have bent your home training before? You know it's not good for sir. There's target. How many of you have met people you cannot give an excuse to? Say, but the, the, but the land is bad. Is it? I didn't send you that job to give me an excuse that the, that economy is not working. Get me my results. How many of you have been there before? You're hungry. What you can If you come to church and pastor says, it's where? You resign. You go as it. Share my for me, share me. I don't know how many people in my life have cancer to resign. They don't always take it. Even when they are at the risk of death, they say, ah, they can't come me, what? Their husbands here, yeah, even if they are eating on your wife at work, you cannot tell her to resign. Oh God, if it's only. It has John Hank Gokoto. 
I'm a for God be known. See, this, these are the way kings prevail against Joab. But God will put substance in your spirit. I said, God will put substance in your spirit. This is what I'm speaking about. They are defined purposes of memorials. God must bring you remembrance. Three scriptures, and I'm true. Deuteronomy 7, 17 to 19. I pray for you that you will not fear the wrath of the kings of this world, of the powers around you. If you will say in your heart, these nations are greater than I. How many of you know when you see things that are greater than you, you know? Are you following me? Talk to me. Are there things you have made that you know that? Or more? Some of you, you are just your uh, principal. So you have been coming late. You become another thing. And the reason you have been... So you leave early on Thursdays. You cannot tell the principal is because I am the one that opens the key, that opens the key to our church. What do you do? You become I will improve, sir. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, guys, there's no plan for improvement, but I will improve, sir. Because you know your heart, these nations are greater than I. How can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them. Tell your neighbor, you shall not be afraid of them. But you shall remember well. Somebody say, remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh. That's why God planted moments in your life. The moments God planted in your life is to, so that when you get to moments that are overwhelming, you will, they will come back again. You will remember where, what God did to Pharaoh. How many of you remember how God delivered you from that very fearful lecture? So sometimes that very fearful lecture, they chose him to be your supervisor. It was God. He has to train you that in the face of fear, you can choose him. You remember what God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. Verse 19. The great tires which your eyes saw, the signs and wonders, the mighty hand, they are stretched out. By which the Lord your God brought you out. So, so shall the Lord your God do to all the people whom you are afraid. You will bring something from your past and plant it into your future. Are you following me? You pull it from your experience and plant it to your future. May your journey be rich in God. Uh, I've just prayed a very dangerous prayer. If you want to have rich faith, you will have great trials. It is greater hardness of Pharaoh's heart that determines what? Multiplied signs of God in Egypt. But listen, when you have the multiplied signs, you will have enough reserve, enough reservoir of, of, of God's dealings in your, in your life that when you marry and the doctor says, the way I'm looking at you, you cannot be pregnant. He said, the God. I remember I almost lost my admission, but God. I remember when I couldn't pay my school fees, but God. That same God is still my God. Are you following me? You pull that remembrance out and you plant it again into the present challenge and you dispossess what is greater than you. There is somebody here you will dispossess what is greater than you. We will tread upon kings. You will tread upon what used to get you afraid in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you with me in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10 to 15? Not fearing the king's wrath. Oh my God, God help my heart. I will not be afraid of my nation. Um, your fear will be the paramount fear that governs my life. When Judah was building the, the wall, the Bible said the adversaries rose against them. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is falling. There's so much rubbish, we are not able to build the wall. Our adversary said they will neither know nor will they see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. Yes, so it was when the Jews would dwell near them came, they told us 10 times. How many times? How many of you know when you hear something one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times? If they don't make meaning the first time, after the fifth time, they begin to make they told us ten times from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Ah, we cannot escape. They were telling them that same message for ten times. There's no escape route from you. Therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I said, People are cutting their family with their sword, their spears, and their bows. But the most important thing is, and I looked and I rose and said to the nobles, to the leaders of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Uh, I don't have a DPO, but I know the Lord. Uh, yes, I, I don't have mobile policemen that govern, but I know the Lord. Somebody remember the Lord. 
I remember the Lord. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. Fight for your brethren. Somebody say, my God is great and is awesome. My God is a deliverer. Remember how you got your first car without ever planning for it. God is about to do it again. What you didn't plan for, what you didn't organize, heaven we organize it for you. Remember the Lord, great and awesome is he. Great and awesome is he. Remember how you didn't even know you are going to marry that year, but he made the way. He made the way. Remember the Lord. See, when you are hearing what the enemy is doing, 10 times, pick, punch newspaper. Wherever they turn, they are upon us. They are in all the forest. So they are ready in Okejebu. They are in uh, Ife. They are... When you have read, then you go to punch, then you go to the nation. Everywhere, 10 times they are telling you, you have only one answer for it. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. Great and awesome is he. Fight for your brethren. And God will fight for you in the name of Jesus. God will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 51, verse 12 to 16. Maybe I should put that as my last scripture tonight. I, even I am he who comforts you. That's the Lord. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man who will die? Somebody say, men die. President die. See, it's fearful. Look at that man that came to greet Buhari 11 a.m. OPEC sec gen. When I saw the video yesterday, I was still troubled. Because by 11 p.m., he died. Our family, you know, destiny he was secure. Just as sister three, former GMD of NNPC, former minister of this. Oh my God, future is secure. God said. And the same way some of you look like you cannot gather. It's the same way God is looking at you. Ah, if you can imagine what will happen in three years. In three years. In three years. In three years. The way I will put things together that you cannot fathom. It will shock you. Are you following me? God will walk on your behalf. I am he who comforts you. Who are you that you will be afraid of a man who will die? And the son of man who will be made like grass. Look at what he said. And you forget what? The Lord your maker. Our fear of men drives out our fear of God from our mind. You forget your maker. Who stretched the heavens? God did not build it. If God stretched the heavens, he can build a duplex. You didn't get what I just said. You missed the place. I said, if God stretched out the heavens, he can build a duplex. A bungalow is too small. God stretched out the heavens. He laid the foundation of the earth. He didn't lay the foundation of a building. He laid the foundation of a planet. And the planet is standing. There is no building you can build that can last like this planet. God is a foundation builder. God is a completer. He that began a good work in you, this same God shall perfect it even to the day of his coming. I thought you would say a better amen. You are feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor. When he has prepared to destroy, where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile is things that he may be loose. That he should not die in the pit, that his bread should not fail. But I am the Lord your God, who divided the sea, whose waves roared. My specialty is not to this, is I don't divide quiet waters, I divide waters that are roaring. I like trouble, that's when I manifest myself. Every roaring sea that is in your life today, God will step into it. Adaba, every deadline, God will step into it. I divided the sea whose waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Verse 16. I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand. That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth. And say to Zion, you are my people. Why are you to, to fear these people and forget your maker? Somebody planted me in Nigeria. In his wisdom. He knew that I was going to experience General Sani Abacha, Ibrahim Babangira, or Basanjo, but he found it intelligent that I should still be here. I know those people's decisions and inactions and actions affect me, but I will never forget my maker. When I'm troubled, I'll go back to him and say, God, you are the one that has a plan for my life. Are you following me? Remember the Lord. Tell your neighbor, remember the Lord. This is the only way you can forsake Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king. 
that's the only way if god is taken from your memory you are trapped in this system you have no other hope the lord will make you to remember his name plant his testimonies in your heart in the name of jesus lift your hands and give god praise to him. by faith I want, I want your spirit to feel like there's an, an, a new feeling of faith in you. I want you to be buoyant. I want you to be buoyant. I didn't say remember your father. There's little you can bring on the table. Remember your mother. I know there's little. But remember the Lord. The Lord who can take from the dunghill and make to sit among princes. When is the Lord that is in your life? Where you can get to can never be imagined. God can take anybody from anywhere to any place. God can take a Moses that people reject and make him a prophet to deliver the people. Remember the Lord your God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is my light and the light of my life. I shall not be afraid. Say the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. And the light. And the light of my life. I shall not be. I shall not be afraid. Say the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. And the light. And his hands that lifted me, they will uphold me to the end. Oh, I shall not be afraid. Say the hands that lifted me, they will uphold me to the end. Oh, I shall not be afraid. Say I've called upon him. I've called. Afraid. I shall not be afraid. I want us to pray one prayer, just one prayer. Every demonic fear that wants to cage me, no matter the type, could be the fear of men, could be the fear of eventualities, could be the fear of death. I break it today in the name of Jesus. Raise your voice and pray and break every demonic fear that wants to put you in a cage. Every demonic fear, fear of the future, fear of the past, fear of causes, fear of words, not afraid of the king's wrath. I break free in the name of Jesus. Free. Free from causes. Free from the actions and inactions of people. That lead the sphere of where I am. The Lord makes a way for me where there is no way. The God who took Moses out of Egypt. Take me out of the fear of my land. It will not control me. It will not grip me. It will not control my family. Break that fear. By death, scriptures told us Jesus destroyed the one who through the fear of death holds people in bondage. Every fear of death break in the name of Jesus. Nothing will happen to my children. No. no. They will leave. They will leave. Shando Ribakaya. Nothing is happening to my wife. Nothing is happening to me. I'm not caught in the midst of the storm of the nations. I'm not caught in the midst of the strivings of the nations. 
Makaroba ya kaseteri ya baba. Rebo shando roba kari adaba. Raba shando robo koron raba kasheke rembo kondo raba ya. I'm not caught in the midst of the striving of the nations. The Lord makes me glad. The Lord makes me glad. Pray that prayer. Break free from that fear. It will be well with you. It will be well. Say to the righteous, it shall be well. It shall be well with him. It will be well. Pray for Lord, despite all that is happening, it shall be well with me. Shall be well with me. Well with me. Well with my family. Well with the church I pastor. It shall be well. Shall be well. Break free from that fear. By the spirit of faith. By the spirit of faith. That symptom is disappearing. That area of calling sickness is disappearing. You are not having a permanent address in my body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shabakalabaya. Shambalakorabaya. I will not die. I will live. I declare the works of God. Calaba. Delivered from the striving of the nation. Delivered from the striving of the nations. Delivered from the strive of tongues. Ruse kanda lisa brodi bara ayendere yeke lusa brodia asuri de kayaba. The fear pervading the land is not my fear. Pharaoh controls them, but I have broken free from him. I've seen the invisible. I've seen the glory of God. I've seen the glory of God. Shaba karaba yadaba yadaba yadaba. Yes, Lord. It will do a new thing in my life. I break free from every cage. Bosses at work. Demands that control. Free in the name of Jesus. Kalebo yatana. Fremondelushkeda. The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. I will not put my hand in iniquity. Because the Lord will supply my need. God will make a way for me, cover me in the day of battle. He will cover my head in the day of battle. He will speak up for me. He will speak up for me. I pray that prayer one moment. Let the Lord hear your voice. Let the Lord hear your voice. I break free from that rot. I break free from that fear. I break free from that control. Ayakola Bashanda. I shall be the head only another day. I will learn and never borrow. I will never borrow. I will never borrow. Dear Sanda, break free from that fear. We choose tonight to obey the Lord. We are baptized into a new level of obedience. A new level of obedience. A new level of obedience. We find rest in obeying you. We find rest in being on your side. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight I pray for you that the Lord will plant a fresh remembrance of him in your heart in the name of Jesus. The Bible said Moses forsook Egypt as because it was like he was seeing him who is invisible. May the invisible become more vivid. Why we do not look at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal and the things which are not seen are eternal. May the Lord lift your gaze. Tonight, may the Lord lift your gaze to see the things that are not visible, the things that are eternal. May the Lord stand by you like a pillar. 
you will not fight that battle alone anymore. The Lord will stand on your right and your left. The Lord will uphold you. You will not fail, you will not falter. He will help you and you will not be ashamed. He will help you and you will not be ashamed. In the mighty name of Jesus. The ones who passed out today in the service here, it will stand by you. You will see his presence. It will go before you. It will be your ear reward. You will not feel alone anymore. Everyone that is going from this meeting tonight, a sense of the presence of God, let it come over you afresh. Let him bring comfort. Let him bring strength. Let him bring encouragement. And it will be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah.